extraordinary times. Uh, we have a very, very special guest. He is a son of our church. He was born and raised in this church. He will always be a son of our church. He married a daughter of our church. He will always be a daughter of our church. We're the body of God, the body of Christ, wherever we fellowship, right? He's an expert. We thought that we would put him into the service this morning because I feel it's incredibly important that his expertise helps us with what's going on. Please welcome John Bavona. Shall we? Shall we? I've got some questions. And then Dan will lead us in a, a special song, a, a, a worship song, and a special song. We'll have our message, and we we'll have communion to finish this, this wonderful time together. John, uh, can you tell us what your job is, what your job title means? Yes, yeah, so I think some may know. So um, I am a senior biosafety officer for the University of Chicago. Um, I work in the Office of Research Safety. Um, I've been there for 20 years. Um, I actually work out at Argonne National Lab at a, a, a research facility called the Howard T. Ricketts Laboratory. Uh, so it's a high containment facility where you wear all the suits and the respirators and stuff like that. And we work with high consequence pathogens. So some in the past you've heard that have been around for thousands of years like plague. Uh, recently in 2000, um, 2001 with 9-11 uh, with we, we heard about anthrax. So we work with that, with, with those, trying to come up with vaccines and therapeutics um, to, uh, uh, for the, the betterment of, of mankind. Also what we do is we work with emerging infectious diseases. So that kind of leads us to where we are today. An emerging infectious disease um, right now is, is the coronavirus. Um, also um, what I've been involved with because of, remember the out, Ebola outbreaks in 2014 is that um, there was a national grant, it was from the National Institute of Health, um, where they needed experts to train people in the field, um, like emergency responders, clinical care workers, nurses, doctors, um, emergency responders, with these high consequence pathogens, just because there wasn't a lot of experience um, in hospitals, just with basic infection control practices. So I had the opportunity to go around really the world, not the world, <laughs> around the, the, the United States and train um, these workers just to make sure that they were safe and what they do. Um, so that's kind of just a, a quick summary of uh, what I do. There is a ton of information about coronavirus. That's the understatement of the, of the morning. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, so there's a really a lot of spectrum of thought. Um, even on the controls that we're doing, um, you hear social distancing, you hear stuff shutting down. So I want people, so if you're, I don't know what side you are in the spectrum, hey, we're doing too much, way too much, or we're not doing enough. Uh, remember that we live in a community, right? So the, not only the community of the body of Christ, but a, at large. So um, the people that are on one side of the spectrum that say, hey, this is w getting way blown out of proportion, it's usually young people and healthy people. Um, I haven't heard too many people in Seattle where there was 20 deaths and um, 50 uh, um, healthcare workers that got it. I haven't heard them talk about uh, it's getting blown out of proportion. So I think wherever you are in that spectrum, and sometimes it lines up political. Remember, we need to. We, our allegiance is the kingdom of God. It's not to a political Republican Amen. or Democrat. So, so that's the first thing, just in regards to the spectrum of thought. All right. So just in regards to this virus. So, coronaviruses are a family of viruses that cause illness. So there's been other coronaviruses. Uh, this one's new. Um, basically, the symptoms are anywhere from a common cold, a cough, to severe respiratory symptoms. Um, so this one, like I said, there's two things that I'm going to start with. That this is novel, this is new. So this virus has never been on planet Earth. Um, so the we've gathered so much research, so much information in a short time, but there's so much more to be gathered. So you might get updated information. You might get a little changing information. So um, it's important to remember that so we don't right away blame and point fingers because it's new. Um, so the information that I'm going to give you is based on the, the evidence that we have right now. Um, another thing that I want to say is that most people are going to be okay with this. Most people are going to have minor flu-like symptoms and, and be okay. Something you'd never even think about, something you'd never go to the doctor about. Um, remember this, I see this is one of the misinformations. This isn't the flu, 
All right, we hear so, social media, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, but this isn't the flu. The infectious rate is higher uh, and the mortality rate is a little bit higher. So don't, don't, so don't make that comparison, right, um, when, when we hear people say that. So right now what we know is it's spread through droplets, respiratory droplets. So what's a droplet? So if I sneeze or if I cough, that liquid is gonna go into the air and then gravity is gonna take it down, right? So that's why you're hearing for social distancing, six feet. So if I sneeze, I'm putting distance between me, if I'm sick, and Brian. So I'm reducing my risk. We're not gonna be able to eliminate the risk, right? We can't eliminate people, right? I don't think so. <laughs> so we can't eliminate it, but we can, we can reduce our risk. So, that, so that's the one thing, it's respiratory droplets, so I'm a cough or sneeze, or contaminated surfaces, right? So think about when someone sneezes, um, where that could go, or if someone puts their hand in their mouth that's sick and what they touch. So think about high contact areas in your home or at your work. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but those are the, that's the main transmission right now that we know of is droplets, okay? So sneeze and cough. That's why it's very important to cover, cover your cough, cover your sneeze. Um, the symptoms, like I said, are basically fever, cough, and a shortness of breath. So shortness is the breath. So the shortness of the breath is the one that you should be very mindful of because that might mean that there's something something that's going. Uh, the, the virus is maybe is is taking a little more strong hold of your health. So be mindful of that shortness of breath. This is an important thing too. There's no immunity in the community. I don't want to sound like I'm rhyming, but most of the time when we have a virus or a sickness, we build immunity to it. Our, uh, we we get a virus, we get a sickness. Um, and then our, then our body builds a, a defense against that. So there's nothing, f we, we don't have that. There's no vaccines, there's no therapeutics. So again, this is the, again the message, it's about the community, the larger community that um, you may be okay, but it might be the more vulnerable um, um, populations. So speaking of the most vulnerable, so um, the good news is that it's, this is really not targeting kids. They're thinking that a lot of the kids might be asymptomatic, meaning that they, don't, they could have it and not have any symptoms at all. But the elderly, um, over 60, uh, with chronic health issues, um, lung or heart, they're more, they're, they could, they're more vulnerable to this. Um, but again, it's very important to remember that most of us, um, the vast majority, are going to be okay and we're going to get through this. John, um how do we fight? How, how, how do we do our part as a community to fight this virus? Yeah, so that's good. So you've seen everything on, on, on the uh, news about hand hygiene, right? So it's important to wash your hands. I have a funny story about um, um, hand sanitizer. So hand sanitizer is good, um, not as efficient as washing your hands because when you wash your hands, you disinfect and you remove because of the water. Hand sanitizer is 99.99% effective. But if you are a construction worker or you have just dirt on your hands all the time, it's not gonna penetrate that dirt. So it'll, it'll help, but the most efficient thing to do is to wash your hands, okay? So Charlie was on a, uh, um, he was on a youth retreat a couple uh, your, your weeks son. ago. Yeah, your son, my Charlie. son Charlie, yep. named after my dad, Charlie. Yep. Um, so he went on a youth retreat. So I, weeks ago, uh, just because of the information, I told everybody to get hand sanitizer and I gave them little, and I bought little packets. So I stuck one in Charlie's backpack, but what I accidentally sent him was aloe vera for your hair. <laughs> it looks the same. So he texts me, he's like, what did you send me, Dad? It's all sticky, and, then I, and I said, send me a picture of what I sent. So I'm like, oh, that's for your hair, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so the expert sent in his son with hair gel to disinfect. Um, so don't touch your face. We touch our face a lot, right? We don't realize how much we do. Um, sneeze and cough etiquette we talked about, uh, routine uh, cleaning of high-touch areas. If you're, ho if you're sick, stay home, right? No pressure for work or church. Right. Um, we want people to just stay home yes. and not, and not uh, infect people. Um, if you're sick, wear a mask. So, it does, you know, I work in a high containment laboratory and we can't find respiratory protection. We can't find masks just because there's a run. But if you're home, maybe you have a bandana or a, Mary, Mary James has a scarf, put a scarf on. Especially if someone's sick at home, that's a good thing because what that does is puts a barrier between the sick person, their sneeze and their cough, and someone else. 
Um, social distancing, we talked a little bit. So social distancing is done on a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, for me and Brian here, it reduces the risk, reduces the exposure, but also what you're seeing is you're seeing large scale. This week, Matthew said, unprecedented with large group gatherings, right? Um, where everything is being, is canceled, shut down, um, and that's where I think people think, ah, is this a little too much? But uh, rem remember, it's about the community. It's, uh, it's about the, 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 all the populations. Um, and really what that does, if, if uh, Paul, if you could put up that slide for me, I want you to just show you this graph. So there's two kind of, um, you see the bell curve, um, but you see the dotted line. And that dotted line represents what we can do in healthcare with hospitals, um, and because we're in a pandemic, so that means it's gone throughout the entire world, and this is a very, very infectious disease, very infectious. The uh, um, re reproductive number for this, so that's how many people one person infects. For flu, it's usually one to one and a half. So if I, give it, if I get it, I'm gonna give it to one and a half people, one and one and a half, between one and one point, one and a half people. With this, it's about 3.2. So that's, that's a lot higher. So this is really important about um, who you are in the community, the young people, the young adults that, hey, I'm fine, right? Because this is what happens. This, this is what's happened in Italy. This is what happened in China. And this is why public health, the experts are saying, hey, we need to shut things down. Because if you don't, you go into an unsustained place with health care where you have people that really, really need health care and they can't get it because there's, there's you know, 100 people for every bed. So we really need to be mindful, not only as the body of Christ, Christians, non-Christians, about what the, 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 the larger impact is. Um, keep an active lifestyle. Um, if you're sick, call the doctor first. Uh, monitor sy symptoms. Sometimes we just kind of go through life and you don't think about it. So be, be, be mindful of what's going on with you and your family. Um, so yeah, so that, I think those are just ways where we can control, okay. Brian. <clears throat> one, one word, this is a movie star here. <laughs> 20 years ago, I can't remember, there was a movie out called Contagion. He was in it. That's and, right. you, and he's not working today because of all the royalties he's <laughs> receiving. John, all right, first of all. Hold on real quick. <laughs> so me and my family wanted to watch a movie. It's been a really crazy week, so we go on Amazon Prime. Hey, we're going to rent a movie, and the number one trending movie was Contagion. Contagion. <laughs> I'm like, I do not need this. I've right. been in the movie, and I'm living it now. Listen, thank you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for coming out. Holly, thank you. All right. We're gonna, we've got a great song, a worship song. We've got a, a, another song leading into the message. Encourage us. Break, break, tell us how we, like something encouraging for this body as we face this pandemic. Yeah, let me just reach all the different groups. If the kids, I don't know if they can listen, but this is a message to the kids. Um, Wash your hands. Be good examples. You know, when you come in before you go or after you go to the bathroom before you eat, wash your hands. Be good examples to your parents. Have joy. You have a month off of school, so use it and, and just just have joy and in, in, in where you're at. Um, young adults. I have two college age. I have a lot of nephews that are here. Uh, be mindful. You are the people that are going to go. In general, you're going to be okay. If you get this, you're going to have minor symptoms. But me, be mindful of parents and grandparents, all right? Think about that. There's many verses in the Bible that talked about, in humility, consider others better than yourself. That's right. Um, so that's with the young adults. With parents, um, get good information. There is so much misinformation. Do not, if, you, if you're getting your information from social media, you're, you're missing it. Do not, if you get an email chain or anything like that, do not get it. There are some fantastic resources. Um, Brian has them. I've gave them to my brother-in-law, Jeff. CDC, um, peer-reviewed articles, peer-reviewed studies. So if you see something in the mail or something, you got to don't believe all the hype. There's a lot of hype and a lot of, a lot of misinformation. So parents, get good information. Uh, prepare with necessities. You know, get two weeks of, of food. Um, get medicine to cover for coughs and symptoms like that. Um, make, Careful with interaction with grandparents. Um, encourage your kids. Teach them about the goodness and faithfulness of Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. How you've, how you've That's seen right. that in your life, show it, share that to your kids. There's a good little game called the snap game, right? So if your kids, because kids stick their hands in their mouth and suck on railings, and Charlie was showing me all this TikTok, and I'm sure they bleached it, but they're sucking on railings and toilets and all that stuff like that. 
So have that snap game. So it just reminds them to get their hands out of their mouth um, and uh, um, um, not to be touching surfaces. For the elderly, um, take precautions that's noted. If you need help, ask for help. Ask Brian. Ask the elders and deacons. Don't be afraid during this time to, to, to stay at home. Don't feel any pressure. If you need help, you call. Call people and just say, hey, I need help. I can't get groceries. Uh, <laughs> My mom couldn't get bread. Um, so for the elderly, and this is a charge to the church, make sure you guys are looking after um, the elderly. So my last charge is to the, is to the church. So I wrote this. Um, history is filled with troubled times, broken lives, wars, death, and yes, disease. For most of us, we are in uncharted days. The world is on edge. It's disconnected. People are afraid and they're anxious. They need love, they need hope, and they need peace in the presence of fear and chaos. So here we are in the middle of a pandemic. Is it coincidence you're here now, living at this time? Or has he called me, has he called you? for such a time as this. Amen. History will write about us, and you can be the author of this chapter. Will we get lost in our politics, in the blame game, and pointing fingers? Or will we remember that our citizenship is in heaven, and our loyalties lie with God's kingdom and those made in his image? Church, this is my time. This is your time. This is our time to show the love and peace of God to a disconnected and anxious and fearful world. God's on the throne. He is neither surprised nor shaken. His providential plan will continue and he will be glorified. The world needs a hero. They need a mighty warrior. They need a king to lead them and a savior to save them. Church, let's be ready in word and Amen. deed. Yes. Let's introduce the world to yes. Jesus. Yes. Amen.